Transposition is a form of genetic recombination that moves defined genetic elements, called transposable elements or transposons, from one DNA site to another. Transposition of DNA sequences can occur by either of two mechanisms, cut and paste transposition or replicative transposition. When you have completed this exercise, you should understand the cut and paste mechanism of transposition and understand the replicative mechanism of transposition. The recombinases responsible for transposition are usually called transposases. Transposons carry a gene encoding their own transposase. Transposons may carry a few additional genes as well. For example, many bacterial transposons carry genes for antibiotic resistance. The very ends of a transposon's DNA are arranged as inverted repeats. These inverted repeats range from about 25 to a few hundred base pairs and carry the recognition sequences for transposase binding. Simply put, cut and paste transposition involves the excision of a transposon from its initial location in the genome, followed by integration of this excised transposon into a new DNA site. This is a non-replicative mechanism, meaning that the transposon is not copied during the transfer. We will now look at the cut and paste mechanism in more detail. To initiate transposition, transposase subunits bind to the terminal inverted repeats. Once the transposase subunits recognize these sequences, they bring the two ends together to generate a stable protein DNA complex called a transpososome or synaptic complex. This complex functions to ensure that the DNA cleavage and joining reactions occur simultaneously on both ends of the transposon, and also protects the DNA ends from cellular enzymes during transposition. Next, the transposon is excised from its initial location in the genome. To accomplish this, each of the transposase subunits nicks one DNA strand, such that the transposon sequence terminates with free 3' hydroxyl groups at each end. To finish the excision reaction, the other DNA strand at each end of the transposon must also be cleaved. Different transposons use different mechanisms to cleave these second DNA strands. For some transposons, an enzyme other than transposase directly cleaves these strands. For other transposons, the transposase catalyzes attack of the uncut ends of the DNA strands by the 3' hydroxyls directly opposite them on the other strand. This reaction forms DNA hairpin intermediates. The two hairpin ends are subsequently hydrolyzed by the transposase. Some transposons use still other, more complex mechanisms to cleave the other DNA strands. The 3' hydroxyls of the transposon DNA then attack the phosphodiester bonds at the target DNA. This reaction is called DNA strand transfer. The sites of attack on the two target strands are usually separated by 2 to 9 nucleotides. This distance is fixed for each type of transposon. The gap in the target DNA resulting from the staggered attack on the two strands is then filled in by cellular DNA repair proteins. The 3' hydroxyls of the target strands serve as primers for DNA replication. Filling in these gaps gives rise to DNA duplications that flank the transposons. These sequences are called target site duplications. The double-stranded breaks at the initial site of the transposon must also be repaired. These breaks can be repaired by homologous recombination or joined directly by the non-homologous end joining pathway. Some transposons move by a replicative mechanism. Although the outcome is different, the mechanism of strand transfer in replicative transposition is very similar to that of cut and paste transposition. However, the transposon DNA is duplicated during transposition leading to two copies of the transposon joined to the new and old DNA target sites. Just as in cut and paste transposition, replicative transposition begins with the assembly of a transpososome.
Next, the transposase subunits introduce nicks in the three prime ends of the transposon strands. However, in contrast to cut and paste transposition, the transposon DNA is not excised from its initial location. As in cut and paste transposition, the three prime hydroxyls of the transposon DNA then attack the phosphodiester bonds at the target DNA. However, the five prime ends of the transposon sequence remain joined to the initial flanking DNA. The replicative transposition intermediate therefore consists of a doubly branched DNA molecule. The two DNA branches within this intermediate each have the structure of a replication fork. The DNA replication machinery can then assemble at one or both of the forks. The three prime hydroxyls of the nicked target DNA serve as primers for DNA synthesis. Replication proceeds through the transposon sequence, generating two copies of the transposon DNA. Once again, the staggered attack of the target DNA results in target site duplications flanking the element. In the process of moving, replicative transposition often rearranges the flanking chromosomal sequences. For some transpososomes, site-specific recombination occurs between the two transposons, resolving these rearrangements. 